Well, if you love him, clap your hands and give him praise. Bless your name, Jesus. God bless you on tonight. It's good to see all of you. Uh, glad that you made it out to teaching on tonight. I believe God's going to speak to us uh, in just a few minutes. Uh, definitely praying for all those that have been affected by this bug. Uh, I got a couple of reports uh, that a few folks have actually lost their lives uh, through this flu bug. And so I, I'm telling y'all, uh, y'all take care of yourself. Hallelujah. Whatever you need to do, don't, don't be afraid to wear a mask if folks is at work coughing and carrying on um, whatever you need to do to be able to cover yourself I thank God Sister Frida is out of that hospital back in the house of the Lord I know God to be a healer hallelujah it's just good to see your face and to see you breathing hallelujah she was, she was trying to talk, and you could see her struggling with the breathing. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't say, you know, a lot because I didn't want her to be in fear of what I saw. But I said, devil, you are a liar. I don't, I don't know what you trying here. Hallelujah. But I do not feel uh, the release of God. So whatever this is, it's got to go. Uh, and so I'm glad to see you tonight. It's a blessing. You were missed in this house. Hallelujah. You were missed in this house. Hallelujah. Well, Mother Carter, you looking good tonight. Mother, mother made sure that she told me, Pastor, I'm 80 years old. I said, well, you don't look it. Hallelujah. And the Lord has kept you. And we're just grateful to God. Uh, to all of you who are here tonight, I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. I'm wondering, is there anybody else praying? Uh, I'm just, I'm just interested to know, is it anybody else praying? Uh, because a lot of times we're so uh, overwhelmed with what the devil is doing. But I, I came tonight to let you know God is up to something. Uh, for the Pentecostal believer, I thought that would get somebody, but you ought to look at somebody on your row and just tell them God is up to something. Hey, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. He's up to something. He's up to something. He's up to something, and I'm excited about it. Uh, don't get distracted. Uh, by what you see uh, because if we truly walk by faith and not by sight you cannot be deceived for what you see with your natural eye because your natural eye does not always depict the truth of what's happening in the spirit realm somebody didn't get that and so there are some things that are happening in the spirit realm uh, that I decree and declare are getting ready to manifest in the natural, but you've got to be patient. Uh, I hear the word of the Lord. I promise you I'm going to Bible study, but I hear the word of the Lord uh, saying to some of you, settle yourselves. Uh, settle, settle yourselves. Uh, because uh, in, in this uh, it's not a season. Uh, it's definitely not a season. Uh, I, I'm going to say uh, this time around. Uh, uh, the things that would normally sidetrack or hinder you, if you settle yourself, you'll find out that God has already dealt with them. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go back to my message, uh, Matthew uh, chapter 22. 
We still got a little work to do. Matthew chapter 22. <laughs> uh, I'm going to read, I promise. You know, when you feel God, you just you want to share. Hallelujah. Uh, so there's this word been floating around, uh, shift, right? Uh, uh, but what happens when the shift happened, but you missed it? Uh, because some are feeling a shift. The shift happened. You just catching up. All right. Matthew chapter 22. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Uh, verse 34. Uh, I have uh, 25 minutes to deal with this. So y'all let's work. All right. Uh, I need your mind open. Uh, I don't need you here tonight uh, just to receive. Uh, I want you here tonight uh, to give your input and dialect reasonably. Uh, Y'all know I don't deal with no foolishness. Hallelujah. Matthew 22, verse 34. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, uh, in the Greek, they would say uh, rabbi. Uh, and one of the reasons they did that is because at about 12, you would pick a teacher uh, to be able to follow. And so in essence, they were mocking him uh, because these were grown men that had already received training. Uh, and so they said, rabbi, teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Uh, they wanted to trip him up on the law. And he said unto them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is likened to it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depends all the law and the prophets. And so while they were trying to trip him up, uh, the first thing I want you to take note of, and we're going to really uh, digest this text tonight. First of all, Jesus took all ten commandments and wrapped them in the two. Uh, because if you break one of them, you broke them all. Uh, that's what the Bible says. It's clear. And so while you're not trying to lie, you'll cheat, <laughs> which is a lie. <laughs> it's a form of a lie. Because you walked out with something under the, under the pretense of you paid for it and you really didn't. So the lie was in your pocket. So even though you stole, you lied. So when you look at the text and you look at it realistically, if you've done one or you broke one, you broke all of them. Uh, I, I think where Jesus is trying to turn the corner here is that we need to stop so much focusing on what we can and cannot do. I, I think that we've spent too much time trying to figure out, can we do this? Can we do that? Can we do this? Can we do that? And, and we've lost the essence of relationship. We've lost it. We've lost it. We've lost the essence of relationship. And so what happens now is we focus on law and we don't focus on love. We don't focus on relationship. And so the truth of the matter is, is just because I'm married doesn't mean that I don't have the ability to cheat. Oh, I have it. I very much so have the ability to cheat. It's not lawful, but I can if I want to. <laughs> Yeah, deacon, go on with your bad self. Yeah. And that applies to anybody. It applies to anybody. And you've all, you've all heard me uh, say uh, uh, the teaching, I don't cheat on my wife so much. It's because just because I love her, it's because I love the Lord, and then I love her. Does that make sense? 
And so what happens now is we get so caught up in the law, we lose relationship. Why don't you do what you do? It's because I'm in relationship with the Lord. And if I'm in relationship with the Lord, say this with me. I don't want to grieve the very thing that's protecting me, the Holy Ghost. We so caught up in, can I do this? Can I do that? You know, take a little wine for your stomach. I want to do this. I want to get tatted. I want to do this. I want to do that. Whatever. And we get caught up. And then we try to, you know, folks do me just like they do Jesus. So what you think about tats? So what you think about piercings? Listen, whatever floats your boat. I'm in relationship with God, and I can only tell you what I'm not going to do because I'm in relationship with him. Now, that doesn't say, I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong. I'm telling you that I value my relationship with God so much that there are certain things that I just won't do because I don't want to offend him. Right? That, that's on you and your relationship. I can attest that our relationship is different. Hallelujah. But the premise is... I don't want to offend God. So skip the law. Uh, I'm not even really focused on the law. What I'm focused on is I know that before I came to God, I cut up. I wish I could get at least three amens right there. Looking at me like that, you're going to make me prophesy and tell your business. I totally cut up before I came to God. And when I came to God, I still did some damage. It wasn't until I really began to strengthen my relationship with God that I grew into maturity in certain areas of my life. But without my connection to God, I can cut up. It's, and, and watch this. It's not so much that the Holy Ghost is holding me in so much as I choose to be held. Huh. Yeah, I, I choose to be held. It's, it's not in that place where God has got his hand on my collar all the time, you know, because then I'm not in genuine relationship. Because, because if, if I had to, to, to hold my wife's collar to keep her at home, she in love with something else. Or somebody else. But when she wants to come home, Some of y'all know, y'all don't want to go home. Y'all ain't going to tell the truth. It's fine. Yes. Huh. Huh. I'm not a fan. Huh. I can get with that. I'm a big fan. Uh. But I'm in relationship. And so I'm in the skybox. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm at every game. Praise the Lord. I'm wearing all the gear. Hallelujah. If it say Jesus, uh, he don't have a number because he's alpha and omega. Y'all ain't get me started. But I'm, I'm rocking his colors. Hallelujah. Uh, because I'm in relationship. Uh, Y'all remember, I don't know if for you it was junior high, high school, elementary, whatever, uh, but if you uh, were a ball player or dating a ball player, uh, one of the things that you would like to do is wear the jersey. Uh, why? Why? Because you wanted everybody to know that you was in relationship. Why is it that we come to God, we try to ride a fine line that we're in relationship, we're really not in relationship, who's really rocking the colors? Uh, uh, 
Ask your neighbor, are you connected to God? I like that. Mother messed me up. Or are you just down at the, you know, paraphernalia booth <laughs> buying a sweat towel? Uh, because Jesus, you, you've got to understand, uh, when he's given the commandment, love the Lord with your heart, your soul, your mind, he's saying, can you give me a chance? Can you give me all you got? Can you give me all you got? Can you give me a chance? Because if you give me a chance, I'll rock your world. God, God will blow your mind. But the problem is not God. The problem is us and how we want to define our relationship with God when it's already been set out. So the question then arises, uh, how grateful are you for the cross? I think that we've become so institutionalized as it relates to church that we forgot the cross. Because the cross helps you. Uh, because when you value the cross, then you realize that every time you go cut up, and you come back, you crucify him afresh. You put him back on the cross. And so how much do we value the cross? How much are we grateful that he had to take our place? I think we get so disconnected in, in doing programs. Um, I'm out here now. Uh, it get so caught up in doing programs that we forget why we're doing the program. We've lost the essence of the program. And we've become too caught up with relationships with each other and not realizing that we're all part of a greater legacy. And we've been talking legacy, children's children. Uh, you know, we've been talking all that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, when Jesus died, resurrected, and then ascended to the right hand of the Father, he gave the opportunity for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved and then go and wait for the promise of the Father, which was the Holy Ghost. And then once you receive the promise of the Father, it gives you the opportunity and the power to be witnesses of the legacy. And, and, so, and so we've become so institutionalized in, in the form and fashion of programming and worshiping the Lord and God visits us because he realizes that some of us will only see him in the program uh, because we've we've drifted from relational goals we drifted from having a solid relationship with Jesus and, and let me tell you to have a solid relationship with Jesus you have to be very intentional or you will get off track Oh, it happens. It happens. It happens on a regular. If you're not intentional about your relationship with Jesus, you will get in trouble. Listen, you can't set up a date night with Jesus. He ain't having it. I'm offended. You know, you're not, you're not going to set up a date night with Jesus. It doesn't work. That means that Jesus is a part of your life. He's not your life. He's a part of your life. And so we only give him a slice. He's not involved. What about in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. We only acknowledge him in the program. <laughs> and so we wait for the next program. And we wait for the next program. I always ask the question, God, why? Why do folks run here, run there, run here? And, and these folks don't have no life. And they preaching and they laying hands and they in the hotel right after the service with the same people they laid hands on. You don't know what them folks is whispering in them people ear. You don't know. Room 222. You don't know what they read. You don't know. You don't know. Hallelujah. I've been on some of the largest platforms that are out there. I've seen the foolishness. You have no idea. 
You have no idea. And so we run and we do all this. It's not because we're addicted to the people. We're addicted to the program. When you're relational, when you're relational, you're very limited on what you will go to. Because your witness is at stake. You're, you're concerned. You're concerned. You don't want to validate anything by showing up. <laughs> oh, God help me. I'm way out here now. You don't want to validate anything by showing up because they know when you show up, you have an anointing. And you would only come if, if the person you're in relationship is going to be there. If God ain't there, I ain't coming. And if I do come and he ain't there, I'm leaving. I came because I, I heard that some folks invited God to the program. <laughs> and so love God with everything. Look at your neighbor and tell him, love God with everything. Tell him that means that you're going to have to stop doing some stuff if you want him to stay. Are y'all in this room with me? The Bible says quench not the spirit. And I know because we worship God in the context of the program that most of us think about quench not the spirit in a service. Y'all ain't in here with me tonight. But when he's talking about quench not the spirit, he's talking about in you. Because if you read the rest of that text, it says quench not the spirit. Uh, this is the will of God concerning you, not the program, <laughs> not the program. This is, this is us. And so when you quench the spirit, what, what happens is, is sooner or later, that person that keeps getting quenched is going to leave. Love keeps God there. Love keeps God there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Love keeps God there. I, I, love keeps God there. Love has gripped God so much that, that we be in sin and he turns his face. He turns his face on sin, but he doesn't turn his face on us. Only love could do that. She wanted, if Sean came home tonight and said, you know what, we've been married for such and such a time, and I want you to know, for such and such a time, I've been cheating on you, but I'm sorry. You see how she pucker her lips? All Jamaica just came out of her. <laughs> she pulled out her razor, and he was cut. And we didn't even see none of it. Hallelujah. It happened fast. <sighs> but what if love gripped her so much that after she cried, cussed, and did everything that she did, she went back to him and said, I forgive you. Y'all groaning and, and doing all this. And I think that's why we have the problem that we have in the Christian church. It's because we hold God to a set of standards that we won't uphold ourselves. And so how are we in true relationship with God when you want somebody to give themselves wholeheartedly to you, but you won't give yourself wholeheartedly to God? <laughs> I came to ask you, are you cheating on God? Are 
you cheating on God? Do you love him with your heart? So the heart for uh, this conversation, uh, we will use your intellect, your emotion, and your will. Uh, heart, soul, mind, intellect, emotion, and, and will uh, deals with uh, just about everything that the text is talking about. Uh, your intellect is your knowledge. It is the place where we study. Uh, if you take note of, of Bible, it says that we ought to cast down an imagination and every high thing that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge, somebody say knowledge, knowledge. of God. So what happens is when we study, we obtain the knowledge of God. And, and what happens now is imagination tries to exalt itself against that knowledge. What, what am I saying? You know, we, are, we have some very creative minds. And our minds have the ability to manipulate just about anything we want to manipulate. Be, be honest. Uh, if you want to do something, your mind can, can think up and conjure up a, a way to be able to do it. If you think long enough in your imagination, y'all better talk back to me, uh, you will find a way through creative thinking and knowledge uh, to be able to do what it is you want to do. Somebody say amen. amen. Can we agree that sometimes our thought process exalts itself above the knowledge of God? I'm going to get a few amens for some realists in here. Uh, because we have the ability, so we think, to think past the word of God. We think we do. We think we do. Uh, but heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word, when you get through with all that foolishness, shall never perish. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. So when it talks about pulling down strongholds, a uh, stronghold is something that sometimes you really want to do. And your mind is trying to figure out, how can I do this? Because in the context of the relationship that I have with God, I don't think this is too much permitted, but, and now the creativity kicks in. Uh, that's exalting itself against the knowledge of God, casting down imagination and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Uh, obedience, that is your actions towards Christ in a relationship. So, uh, you have the knowledge, you have the emotion. Uh, the emotion is the danger zone uh, because you can have knowledge and most of the time uh, we can kick the knowledge because we have enough word to be able to combat our personal knowledge, uh, which gives us something to fight. In other words, your body uh, has its desires, but because you have the word of God, you have something to fight the body with, right? It's the knowledge then that helps you fight the body. But when emotion kicks in, whoo, whoo, uh, uh, let's just deal with anger because I, I, I don't want to go left with sexuality tonight. Uh, let's just deal with anger. Uh, uh, truth be told, some of us get high on anger. I need some hands to go up because y'all playing games in here. It's, it's like when you get mad, uh, uh, it's hard to calm you down. Can I, can I get a witness? All right. I'm going to lead you in. It's all right. Because <laughs> some of y'all just in denial. I'm going to lead you in. Let's start again. Uh, when you get angry, it's hard to calm you down. Come on. Come, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on down this road. I see you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard to calm you down. <laughs> the sound booth, <laughs> they got problems in there. Y'all pray for them. Uh, 
so one of the reasons why it's, it's hard to calm you down is because in your sanctified imagination, you are trying to figure out if you can actually do something to this person. Come on in. Come on in. Let me see your hands. Come on in. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring you down this street. All right. All right. Some of us are trying to figure out if we could actually do something. Uh, others are mad because they know they can't do nothing. Come on down the street. Come on. Come on. I'm going to walk y'all down this street. I promise you. Uh, you need to come on out of denial. Uh. And, and, and what happens is because you can't do nothing, you get a little more frustrated. I ain't no punk just because I'm a Christian. You don't know what I've been delivered from. You know, Woo, if this had been back in the day. You know, you know I could call somebody. And you can get pretty crafty on, on your imagination on how to deal with this issue. Somebody just say amen. amen. And, and, and so, so we have to be extremely careful because when emotion kicks in, sometimes emotion pushes us past where we want to go. And then when you're in relationship with God, you always have to ask, and if you're writing, please write this down. When you're in relationship with God, one of the questions you have to ask is, why did God allow it? Woo! Why did he allow it? Why did he allow it? Why did he allow it? Now, don't, don't get to imagining. <laughs> because... If you like Sister Danae, you'd be like, I think God allowed this because he wanted me to get him. <laughs> Say amen, Danae. <laughs> I, I really do. You know, I read the Old Testament and she's gone. I've had to talk her off the ledge a few times. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, because uh, emotion... Uh, grouped with imagination takes you farther than you really want to go. And you have to remember that you're in relationship with God. And so it kind of takes the pressure off of you because I don't know why God allowed this. But I have to go back to the text. There's no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but also with the temptation make a way to escape that you might be able to bear it. He's allowing it to come my way because he knows that he's already built in me what I need to be able to pass this test. Now, 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 this test is a gateway to new blessings in God. It changes your psyche because what happens is flesh says, I just want to cuss you out one good time. It would make me feel better. Or I want to punch you in the throat. I got some witnesses up in here. I've even had some believers who... Uh, are gifted in the gap and somebody that did them wrong they would antagonize them until they threw the first punch so that they could say they weren't the aggressor and they had to defend themselves <laughs> look at the name she like yeah <laughs> he giving me ammo tonight <laughs> but Say that uh, my current situation is a gateway to God's blessings. Uh, 
My current situation is a gateway to God's blessing, but it's contingent upon how I act in the relationship. It's contingent upon how I act in the relationship. God gives me a flip phone. If I handle the flip phone properly, he might upgrade me. But if I misuse the flip phone, I'm going to stay right there. And he might take that and give me one of them government phones. They on Northgate. Yeah. <laughs> they had the little tent, free phone, them government phone. All of them are are tracked and and tapped, and they listening to everything. It's just it's the devil. Uh, they were listening to me the other day. I forget who I was talking to. I got a Sprint. I'm like, what are you on my line for? Uh, say that to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you are in a relationship full of blessings contingent upon how you act. I, let me prove it. Let me prove it because I feel like shouting already. Uh, the Bible declares that God will withhold no good gift from you. So God is not the reason blessings are withheld. And we cannot fast forward God. We have to live. <laughs> so, you know, we be telling people, live and not die. What does that really mean? Because we always put it in the physical context. We want to see you live in the physical. But what about living in the supernatural? Live and not be dead to God. Live and not be dead in the spirit. Live. It's a difference. It's a difference because, you know, we always talk about the healings of the body. But what about healings of the soul? That I might sanctify you wholly. That's your mind and your spirit, right? Mind, body, and spirit will be made whole. So God is not just dealing with your body. There's some filthiness in the spirit that he's dealing with as well. To get that stuff out of your, out of your spirit, out of your mind. Because some of us had connected to some soul ties that was going to take us out if God didn't deliver us. <laughs> What if you'd have slipped and married that other one? <laughs> Based upon relation. Devil. And so when you think about giving God your all, you have to slow down a minute and really define your relationship. Where does God reside? What, what part or, or does God have all of you or, or are you just doing you? God is not a program. Uh, God is not a, you know, uh, uh, whatever. He's a life. He's a life. God is life. God is life. You don't, you don't program into Jesus. You live into Jesus. And, and so we have to be very careful about how we define our relationship with God and how we connect to God. Look at your neighbor and ask them, how are you connected to God? Let them answer you. It's quiet. How, how are we connected to God? Let them answer you. Somebody tell me some of what you heard. Yes. Oh, man, I thought you was really going to say something. I was depending on you, nephew. Through prayer? You connected to God through prayer. All right. What else? You connected to God through love. All right. Through obedience. 
All right. Through relationship. Prayer. All right. Worship. All great stuff. All right. That's how you commune with God. But you're connected to God through the blood. Are you in this house? And this is why we're having some of the issues that we're having is because we get disconnected from the blood. It was the blood that actually connected us and brought us into relationship. Without the blood, none of us would be in relationship with God. It would not happen. It was by the shedding of blood that God brought us back in relationship with him. We've got to be clear how we're in relationship with God. We got to be clear by his blood. Without his blood, I would be stuck in sin. I'd be a trip. It wouldn't be no relationship without the blood. I couldn't be in relationship with God without the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. We have to be very clear uh, because, you know, we'll, we'll holler out the blood when we want to get rid of a devil, right? The blood be against you. Well, that only works if you're in relationship. <laughs> it does not work. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? You ain't in relationship with God. You don't have no authority to use that blood. You don't, you don't even know who he is. It's the blood that brings you in relationship. It covered. And so when you're in relationship, he can't tell the difference between you and Jesus when you declare the blood. Are y'all in this house? And see, most of us are trying to think, you know, well, I'm not effective because, no, if you're in relationship with God, we're not talking about your frailties because even Paul said, you know, uh, more, most gladly will I glory in my, <laughs> woo, because in my weakness, he's made strong. So just because he was in relationship with God, he understood that just because he had afflictions didn't, you know, alienate him from the ability to be able to use the blood. Paul gets it. He gets it. Most gladly will I glory in my affliction. I glory in it because, yeah, I'm weak, but because I'm weak, it doesn't, it doesn't cut me off. Because of who I'm in relationship with. This takes a little pressure off of you. Because when you get in relationship now, I ain't casting you out in the name of Davis. Because I know that demon ain't going nowhere. You say, Davis, some more demons might show up. Davis, yep, that's my house. But when you say in the name of Jesus and you in relationship, do you know that the devil, he's trembling? That's why he says, "Woo! God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, peace, and a sound mind. Why do I have a sound mind? Because I know when I'm in relationship with Jesus, you can't run up on me. Uh, uh maybe maybe I was tripping for a minute and I felt his presence the blood what what do you know who I'm in relationship with not do you know what church I go to do you know what denomination I, I'm Pentecostal no I'm in relationship with Jesus and I just happen to wait on the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Ghost. So I have the ability to speak in tongues. Hallelujah. But I'm in relationship with Jesus. Look at your neighbor and ask him, does Jesus drive you? Some of us will tell, Jesus, come on, take a ride with me. No. I'm rolling with Jesus. You full of the devil. <laughs> Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, 
And you got to know who you in relationship. You got to know what's the premise of the relationship. How did you get into relationship with Jesus? Over 2,000 years ago, he climbed up a hill called Golgotha. He drug a cross when he couldn't drag it no more. He's, he had got somebody out of the crowd, Simon Peter, who just happened to be a black man, carried his cross up the hill. Hallelujah. They sat him in the middle between two thieves. You ought to know what's up. You ought to know what's up. You ought to know what's up. We know all these new songs. We know all this stuff. We want to fall into deep worship. We want the fog machine to rock. We want the lights going. But you don't even know who you in relationship with. It's time to get rid of these pews. You got some pews in your heart need removing. Hallelujah. And Jesus ain't sitting on none of them. Who you in relationship with? Hallelujah, hallelujah. We got people on our pews. We don't have Jesus. You know, we need to understand what are we really rocking with. In a time where people really don't understand who God is, we cannot afford to be ignorant concerning how we're in relationship and who we're in relationship with. We need to be clear because they're coming up with all kind of stuff. The first satanic church uh, of the devil has expanded. They are opening churches everywhere. They're doing church plants. You know the stuff we're supposed to be doing, multiplying. they rocking it. They got upside down crosses. Y'all don't get quiet on me now. They got upside down cross. They got the little pentagon or whatever that is on the floor. I don't even know what all that stuff is because it don't interest me. I see that not the blood. Because I don't want you to get none of my nieces, none of my nephews, none of my grandchildren. You got to start canceling assignments, decreeing and declaring over your family. But you can't do none of it if you don't know who you in relationship with and why. You could decree and declare and ain't nothing happening. Hallelujah. You, when you go home tonight, you need to know. You need to be for sure. You need to know what's up. So when you speak... You know it's effective because you know who and you know why. It's imperative. You can't, I, I figured it out. You can't give God all you got because you don't understand the premise of the relationship. If you were there to see him die, it would change things. And you had a, a conversation with Pontius Pilate. And Parks' pilot said, it's supposed to be you, but we're going to send him. And you watched him take a cat of nine tails and rip the flesh off his back. It, it should have been you, uh, but, but he took it. You know, we quote this stuff. By his stripes, we are healed. Do you know what his stripes are? Do you know, do you know what the whip was actually made of? That, that. That he took the, the lickings so that you could be healed. Leather straps filled with, with animal teeth, bone, and glass. So that when it hit the flesh and they pull it back, it would just rip it off. <laughs> Do you know who you're in relationship with? See, these kinds of things. You see, you don't need a, a, a hill song, hallelujah, uh, to really go into worship when you understand. And I like his song. I ain't hating. Hallelujah. But I'm just saying, you don't need no extra when you know who you're in relationship with. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It, you know, you don't have to take me in. I'm already in. I, you know, that bothers me. I'm going in. I'm already in. What you talking about? I woke up in. Hallelujah. It's because God, I'm in relationship. And so now, here, here's the premise. Well, I'm in relationship. So when I hear something I can agree with, then the power of God can come in the midst of us because I, I agree with it, uh, not because you took me in. I'm already in. You just found me. <laughs> Because if you find me anywhere else, it's a problem. You have to find me in the Holy Ghost. Because of my relationship. Because of my relationship. 
because of my relationship. So the conversation, oh, we didn't have church. No, you didn't have church. No, no, you, no, you didn't have church. I've been having church all day long. You didn't have church. Now, when we got to the assembly, some of y'all was tripping, whatever, but, but I've been having church all day and yesterday and the day before. I'm going to have it tomorrow. Hallelujah. I believe that song. This is just a rehearsal. When we get to heaven, y'all, that's too old for some of y'all. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, love the Lord your God. Look at your neighbor and just say, love him with all you got. Look at another neighbor and say, you cannot connect with God unless you go through the blood. Can I say this? Somebody tweet this. Getting to God is messy. <laughs> you got to go through the blood. Getting, getting to God is messy. You, you, you got to go through the blood. It, can, can, woo! Getting to God is messy. You got to go through the blood. That, that means that all your stuff has got to go through the blood. It's got to get nailed to the cross. You, getting to God is messy. Getting to God is not clean. You got to go through the blood. Hallelujah. I wish Trump would tweet that. All this stuff he'd be tweeting. <laughs> Hashtag White House, you know. Uh, love him with all you got. Love him with all you got. And the only way you can love him with all you got is to go through the blood. And without the blood, we have no relationship. There's no relationship. There's absolutely no relationship without the blood. Look at somebody and say, without the blood, there's no relationship. That means that we ought to study what Christ had to go through. Why is it important, you know, uh, Preachers preach it uh, pretty aggressively once a year during Easter. Uh, but our relationship with God is year round. Uh, I, I want to know what he had to go through uh, so that I can better appreciate the relationship. My wife get in the kitchen and, and she don't make gravy out the can. Uh, she gets some flour and a, and a frying pan. I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> There's a greater appreciation because of what she had to go through. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. Went in there and made some uh, uh, little cakes. Lord, have mercy. Uh, it, it's a greater appreciation because what she had to go through. Uh, to be able to uh, make what she made. Jesus had to go through a lot to be able to put us in right relationship with them. Now, when we get that, uh, it changes why we worship. We don't worship because uh, there's a slow song that we can agree with. <laughs> y'all, y'all, you know. Y'all, you know and, and, and I learned, uh, this is going to feel like shade, but it's not. I learned why uh, people don't praise and don't worship. They're out of relationship. Now, somebody in here going to say that's not true, but I'm telling you from what I know. I wasn't clapping when I was fresh out of sin. I had to come in and repent. See, there's a cycle, yes. There's a cycle. Uh, you, yeah, don't, y'all, you ain't going to talk, so I'm going to talk. We come into church, hallelujah, and okay, I made it. Praise the Lord. All right. Father, forgive me for last night. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just, y'all, y'all ain't going to be honest. Hallelujah. Matter of fact. <laughs> Forgive me for all week. <laughs> it's been rough. But David, you try to get deep. David said, I was glad when they said unto me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. God, I was here. 
And we go through that. We go through that. Uh, Lord, forgive me. You know I want to do right, but I'm struggling. <laughs> and we go through the formalities. And then, you know, 25, 30 minutes into the service, we ready to worship. Why? Why? Because when we got here, we realized that we had to go through the blood to even be able to make a connection to participate in church. Otherwise, we'd be fronting. And many of you have confessed to me, I ain't going to fake. Well, we know that. We see it all on your face. You ain't telling me nothing new. That's why a lot of times I don't wear them because I really don't want to see you. I want to try to give you a chance to get it right. So when I put them on, hey, praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, if I don't go through the motions and just trying to make Jesus a part of my life and just go on and make him my life, I won't have to go through the motions. Uh, say this. I have to be intentional concerning my relationships. So my number one relationship is God. Without him, nothing else will work. Can you agree? Why do you run? Somebody answer me. I mean, I got a few minutes. I, I'll take an answer. Huh. So the relationship has requirements. Oh, and sometimes you don't want to do what the relationship requires of you. All right. I like that. Somebody else, give me something. Why do we run? Yes. Don't want to let go. Want to hold on to it. God deliver me from everything but this. Afraid, fear. That's good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know what happens because I, I just dealt with this, the testimony of an individual, and 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 the person said. You know, there were some things that I wanted to do, and they did them, and then there was a consequence that affected the rest of their life. But we don't think about that. It's, it's deep. It's deep. And then, you know, uh, our imagination now uh, finds out ways to be able to do what we want and not have consequences. Right? Uh, but, but then it popped. Yeah, consequences. You get that one later. All right. So, so when we're in relationship with God, and we give Him everything, we go through the blood. Then it comes down to the last part of the text, because uh, we're gonna have to close. And the second is like it. So we connect to God. Right. We give Him everything. Uh, and then we got to connect to others. And this is where the problem comes in. Because we want to connect with somebody that's on the same page. <sighs> Unfortunately, most people can't be on the same page because they're not even in your chapter. And we're trying to force people into a book that they don't even belong in. So have we ever thought that sometimes God places people in your life for you to pull up or for you to be pulled up. 
And you have to define what it is. Because sometimes you're trusting people with stuff, not realizing that they were a person that you were supposed to pull up. And because they're not on where you are and you're not trying to thrust them into the next level, you're just trying to get them to be on the same page, you share with them stuff that probably shouldn't be shared with and they don't handle it properly. It's because we didn't define where they belong in our relationship. We always have to be missional in our relationship. What is the mission? What is the purpose in us coming together? Why are we in relationship with one another? What is the purpose of it? Right? And when we understand, I wish I'd learned this early on. God, uh, when we understand the premise of our relationship, either you're snatching or you're being snatched. Right? And it might be that we both do some snatching. I snatch you up, the Lord bless you, and then you snatch me right on up after that. But we got to define that and understand where we are and what we're doing. We're not supposed to dwell, we're supposed to go. It's when we stand in the house with each other too long that feuds break out. I'm going to have to take that in another Bible study because we we out of time. Uh, but I'm, I, I've learned why a lot of internal spats happen is because we've been dormant too long and we haven't been going, which is Matthew 28. I'm going to get to that. Hallelujah. Uh, and so uh, say, say this uh, with me. Uh, connect, grow, serve. That's what comes out of Matthew 22 and 34. Connect to God and to others. Grow into maturity and in relationship with God and others. And then serve uh, in the house and out of the house, the community and the world. Hallelujah. And, and so when we see uh, what Matthew 22 and 34 is doing for us, it's really setting up a vision and mission statement out of the Bible that we don't even have to make cute. And it's one that we can remember. Connect, grow, and serve. Connect, grow, and serve. Right? Uh, we don't need to make up uh, changing a world. Nah, we ain't doing all that. Connect, grow, and serve. Connect, grow, and serve. Right? Because... Because before we could take on the world, <laughs> can we take on your house? It sounds funny, but I'm so for real. I, I'm working on my house. Y'all know I'm working on my house. Me and my wife are solid, but I got a wayward daughter that I'm working on. I'm working on my house. And I'm not going to be satisfied till she in my living room, snotting and foaming at the mouth, speaking in tongues. Uh, I'm not going to be satisfied. Hallelujah. And so I'm just in a, in, a, in a loving stage. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I, you know, you're doing whatever. I love you. I, love, I ain't going to judge you, but I'm telling you what's going to happen in the long run is you're going to be down there. T -t 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 we're going to be tarrying for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And it's going to happen because God promised me. See, y'all missed it. And I know it's going to happen because I'm in relationship. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm not flustered by, by the outburst of activity. It doesn't bother me because I know what the Lord promised me. You shall be saved in your house. But you can't claim it if you ain't in relationship. But people come to me all the time. Pray for my child. No, I'm praying for you. Because if you was in relationship, you would just hold, whoo, you would just hold God's word. Oh, I just made somebody mad. All right. Hallelujah. Uh, we will continue. I got so much more uh, to give. I got so much more to give. Uh, the great commandment, the great commission wrapped into.
one vision and mission statement, connect, grow, and serve. You're going to see it all over this place. Uh, when people ask you, what is the vision of your church? What is the mission? You can just tell them, connect, grow, and serve. That's it. You know, we, we're not going to get cute. We're trying to do what the Bible say right here. If we could do this. Jesus said we got it going on. He took all ten and wrapped them in the two. Connect, grow, serve. You're going to see it on t-shirts. You're going to see it on the walls. You're going to see it everywhere. Uh, go over to your neighbor and ask him, what's the vision and mission of this church? Just ask him. That's it. Ain't no special meeting on that. It's out of the Bible. We're not voting on it. It's out of the Bible. <laughs> I'm just trying to help everybody tonight. Hallelujah. We should have talked about this. Jesus already talked about it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Connect, grow, serve. Connect, grow, serve. I, I think part of the problem is sometimes we have vision and mission statements and they be so stale. I know what the Lord gave me. You didn't read the book. Hallelujah. <laughs> Connect, grow, serve. I'm excited about it because God is revealing his word, putting us in right context with him, putting us in right relationship with him so he can do what he wants to do to his church. Does that make sense? Not our church, his church. His church. I go to the Lord's church. Hallelujah. <laughs> I go to the Lord's church. I, you know, somebody said the other day, Davis, what's going on at your church? Man, I don't have no church. What you talking about? Don't you pastor? Yeah, I pastor God's people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I seen it. Oh, God. I about to be real petty. Praise the Lord. All right. It's offering time. We thank God that we're in God's church so we can sow in good ground. We don't have to question because it's the Lord's church. Uh, and I know many came uh, ready to give tonight. I definitely did. I got my offering somewhere. If, if the Lord bless you tonight, give him some praise real quick. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. I really would ask that you would uh, put your notes from Bible study out on Facebook. Uh, Tweet them, Snapchat them, Instagram them, whatever you're doing uh, on social media. Put them out there. Uh, you'd be shocked how people are blessed by them and how nuggets cause people to think and to really evaluate and question their relationship with God. They ought to be wrestling with the text every opportunity they get. And we're going to help them uh, through social media and some of the things that we say. All right. Uh, let's stand. Let's get our offerings ready and stand. You're standing. That lets me know uh, you prayed about what to give tonight. Uh, you didn't come with a tip. Uh, you came to bless God. You came to sow uh, into the kingdom, sow into the word uh, that you just heard. Uh, we are a 100% member-supported church. Uh, we have no government grants. Uh, we are not controlled by the city. Or the state, hallelujah. Uh, the government was on his shoulders. Oh, let me quit. Lord have mercy. I was really getting ready to go there. Father, we bless you tonight. For your word is life and your word gives life. I thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for revelatory knowledge, God, and wisdom to be able to speak to your people concerning your word. God, we are not programmed. But we have a life with you and we appreciate the relationship. And so on tonight, God, as many go home, allow them to reflect on what happened here tonight and to think and to evaluate and to write some things down concerning their relationship with you. Nobody comes to you but through the blood. And so, God, we're so ever grateful that you sent your son Jesus, that he would take our stead. And so tonight, God, bless these offerings, bless tithes, bless everything that's coming in. They're bringing. They're not paying God, but they're bringing. And so we're being obedient to your word on tonight. Seed, be obedient to the word of God. 
Whatever the word of God says concerning you, seed, I know you must do because I'm in relationship with him. And for that, I'm grateful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.